In this video, I'll show you how to create this nice checkerboard pattern grid, as well as highlighting on mouse over and how to select individual tiles so you can perform your game logic. Let's get stuck into it. Begin by creating two C sharp scripts, one for the grid and one for the tile itself. In the grid manager scripts, let's create a few variables. One for the width of the grid and one for the height. Let's create a function called generates grid. In here, we will loop over our width. So let's call this X for width. And then inside here, we will loop over our height. So call that Y. And now we need a reference to our grid tile. So let's create a reference there and we'll call this tile prefab. And before we spawn that, we need to actually create our tile. So back in Unity, let's create a 2D object, a sprite square, call it tile, put our tile script on it, and then let's make that a prefab. Next, let's create a empty object here, call it grid manager, slide in our grid manager script. And for the width, I'm using 1080p, so I'm just gonna use the 1080p aspect ratio. So I'll do 16 by nine. And whoops, then we'll put the tile prefab on the tile slot there. And now let's actually go back and spawn them. So now we're looping over our width and height. Let's say spawned tile equals instantiate and we'll send in our tile prefab, new vector three, and this will be on our X and our Y. And then just quaternion identity is fine. Let's name these so they are more self-explanatory in the editor. So spawn tile.name, let's call this tile, and then we'll send in the X and the Y, just in our start method, oops generate grid all right let's try that out and there we go so uh zero zero tile is actually on zero zero and instead of moving this to center in the camera how about we move the camera to center into the game world so that our zero zero is actually in world space zero zero so let's grab a reference here to our camera and uh, actually the transform of the camera and down here, we will say cam transform position equals new vector three. And we will say our width of the map divided by two. And this is actually a float. So let's just cast this to a float. Sorry, it's an int. We need to cast it to a float. And then also we need to remove half of a world tile. And you'll see why in a moment. Okay, and then we can just copy this for the height as well heights and then we actually still want the camera to be at minus 10 which is the standard position that they start on let's try that no we have not set our camera all right let's try that out beautiful but it's a little bit hard to kind of see what's going on so what would be good is if we could grab this tile here and make this one type of grain and then this one another type of grain and then back to the original grain just like a chessboard so i'll show you how to do that so in our grid manager so the way we do that is we say is offset we're going to check if this tile is offset and we'll say is x modulo 2 equals 0 which basically we're just saying here is x is x uh even right now and y modulo 2 uh, does not equal zero. So we're saying is X even and Y is not even, or alternatively, we're going to say is X not even, but Y is even. And if, if, if so, we want to color them a separate color. In our tile scripts, let's remove this boilerplate and let's create a few references here. So private color, base color, and also offset color. And a reference to our renderer here, sprite renderer, because we actually need to change the color of it. And let's make a public void init function. And this will take in a Boolean is offsets. And then we'll say renderer color equals if we are offset, 
Let's set it to the offset color. Otherwise, let's set it to the base color. And back in our grid manager, we'll say spawn tile dot init is offsets like that. Now over on our tile, let's create some colors here. So I've got a nice green for this base color. And then for our offset color, I'm going to use the same green, but I'm just going to change it just ever slightly. Let's put on our sprite renderer here and let's try that. There we go. Now we can actually see the individual hexes or the squares, sorry. So let's add a little bit of interactivity here. So on tile, let's create a on mouse enter. And let's actually grab another reference and we'll create a game object here. And this will be our highlights. Now there's many ways to do this. You can do it with shaders or just change the actual sprite itself, but I'm just going to enable or disable this highlight object whenever we mouse over it. So on mouse enter, it's going to be true. And then on mouse exit here, we're going to say false. And then back on our tile, I'm going to just create another 2d sprite on top of it here. And this will be called the highlight. And let's just make it a white, but let's reduce the opacity here and then actually disable it. And then on the tile, just add the highlight. And then also to mouse on it with those mouse events, it actually needs a collider. So let's add a, a box collider 2D there Then press play. And there we go. Now we've got interactivity. So this is a quick, easy way to start a grid. Uh, obviously you can start placing units down here and then you can uh, tap into the uh, mouse down event here to select the tiles or the units and then you can uh, be on your merry way and create your game. So I hope this helped. If it did, leave a like and uh, subscribe and I'll see you next time for the next tutorial. Uh, hello, so this is post-production Matt and I figured I should probably show you how to actually uh, grab these tiles uh, in Logic. So the way I would do this is I would create a private dictionary and the key will be a vector two and then the actual value will be a tile so i'll just do that now when we're creating our grid i'll instantiate this new uh, dictionary and after we create a tile i will say tiles and then new vector two and this will be the x and the y equals to the spawn tile like that and now you can create a function here. It could be public and this will return a tile, get tile at position. This will take in a vector two and then you can do this. So we'll do try, whoops, no, we won't actually. We will do if tiles, try get value and we'll put in the pause. And then we can actually say out var tile. So if, if the tile is available, we will simply return tile. Otherwise let's just return null. So then you can just quickly just call that to get the tile at the, at the current position. And that's how you would do that.